Hello and welcome to Opening the Curtain, an interview series of artists in conversation with students. My name is Erin Brady and I am a sophomore at Palo Alto High School. Today I am interviewing Giovanna Sardelli, who is the New Works Director at TheaterWorks. What is your job and how did you get to where you are now? I have um, two jobs. One of my jobs is that I am a freelance theater director and the other job is that I am the director of New Works for a theater. And I'll kind of break that down. Um, so as a freelance director, what I do is, because I work uh, most often with living playwrights who are writing in the moment, I most often am hired by a playwright and a theater to bring a new play to life. And so I become the person who, along with the playwright, I hire all the designers who will design the world in which the play will take place. I then cast uh, with a casting director, all of the actors who will get to tell the story. And it's my job to make sure that the vision of the play is realized on stage. So that's uh, pretty much what I do as a director. And as a director of new works, what I do for theater works is I spend my time finding new plays uh, that we can bring to the stage. I look for young talent that, so we can have new voices, new ideas on our stage. And I travel the country directing in theaters across, across this country and looking for talent anywhere it might be. So funny, the other day I was saying to someone, I feel like um, in a good way, I never had to grow up because my job is to play. And I love it because I'm working with the people who are examining the issues that we're facing right here and now. So I, we come together, we sit in, around a room, we sit around a table, we are in a rehearsal hall and we're examining the issues that humanity is facing right now we're exploring ways to inspire people, teach people, entertain people. And what I love about it is no day is the same. Even if you're working on the same play, no day is going to be the same. There's always something unexpected. Most often it's delightful. And the challenges just tend to make us better people and better artists. Yeah, that's why I love acting and stuff. Um, how do you see the future of your art form as the new works director. Can I, I want to go, I wanted to go back because, so you're an actress? Is that your primary focus? Yes. That's great. Yeah, that's what I hope to be. It's funny. I think acting is the gateway, <laughs> is the gateway to all roles in the theater um, because it's the f thing that we see the most. I wanted to be an actress. I began my career as an actress, uh, mm -hmm. was trained as an actress, and then realized at a certain point that I was so unsatisfied with just telling that tiny piece of the story that it was so much fun and I, I loved doing it, but that I actually creatively was not as satisfied as being the person who gets to tell the whole story. What's the favorite role you've had so far that you've been able to act in? I think playing Titania in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Excellent. Excellent. What about you? Before you uh, became a director, what was your favorite role? My favorite role was Juliet. Why do you love what you do? I did that show before you were born. And I am still friends with the vast majority of people who worked on that show. We still make art together today, to this day. And that's, I just love that. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Theater creates such like deep human connections that last for so long. Yeah. How do you see the future of your work at TheaterWorks? Well, I think, even though I know right now is, um, such a crazy time. I mean, theater is taking place on our computer screens. I'm actually so excited by the stories that are gonna come from this. 
I'm so excited. What a time to be alive. Right? We are the we are the moment that history will explore <laughs> the plays that are going to come out of this moment, I think are going to be fascinating. And I also think technology, we're going to figure out, we're going to keep the best of what we've had to use and had to learn. And I think it expands the nature of collaboration Um who we're able to connect with literally so that we'll be able to have artists in the room from across the world if we want, because we can figure that out. So I think the future of theater, I think we'll, we'll gather back together because there's something so profoundly sacred about that act of sharing in our humanity. Um, I'm in a virtual production right now of She Kills Monsters. And it's a lot of fun, even over Zoom. Right? I found that too, even in rehearsal since March, when we gather, even in this Zoom room, it is still so fun and creative and the conversations are so fascinating. And that resiliency of spirit on display at all times is, it's kept me going through this whole thing. And knowing that it, that you're doing it now also and that you're getting to still play and act that's great and i think it has given me the opportunity to play bigger parts than i would have been cast as just because the shows are more intimate so we're having more shows than we usually would do so more people are getting the opportunity to play bigger parts and learn from that oh that's great yeah, I've already seen um, so many of my friends getting to meet and work with big time Broadway actors and actresses because they've been offering lessons and workshops over Zoom, which is an opportunity, you know, 10 years ago, nobody would be able to have. When we return to theater in person, you know, I think we'll all be a lot more grateful, but I think we'll all be a lot more creative too because we'll remember the things and the people we worked with over quarantine and we will have all of these new ideas. And now that we'll then again have the resources to you know, put those ideas into life, I think people will come up with some really cool things that they can begin work on once you know, we can all start doing theater in person. I like that. Mm -hmm. One of the other things I like, Erin, about my job as new works director is like meeting people like you. So fi hearing you talk about theater, knowing that you're out there making art happen. And, you know, now when I read a play and if there's a part for a younger, young woman in there, I go, oh, I know, I met Aaron. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that. I love how um, in the you collect good people in this business and you get to, keep working together. And I guess that transitions into the question I had to come up with, which is um, given the amount of students who are passionate about theater and having a career in theater, who are then told by other people, you know, don't study that or don't get a job doing that. It's not practical. You won't make money. Um, what advice do you have to those people? <laughs> you know, it's so tricky. I mean, I feel like this business is amazing and it happens everywhere on so many levels that nobody should tell anyone they can't figure it out because I come from Las Vegas, Nevada. And when I was, um, and when I was in high school, there was no theater here. I could not get a job to work in the theater. It didn't exist. So for me to get a job, I had to move to New York and I figured it out. I was working with somebody the other day who said there are, there's a class, an underrepresented class of people. You know, we talk about it, if you're upper class, middle class, lower class. And she said, I'm super proud to be a part of the artist class. Those people who are fulfilled and those people for whom money may not have always been the great motivator, but whose lives are in, enriched in a different way. And that is not to say you can't make a fortune in this business because you can, but 
most people figure out how to sustain the life they want to lead. So there are so many pathways. It's a business that makes no sense to anyone, even those of us who are in it. <laughs> so never let anyone tell you <laughs> anything about how it works or doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, especially growing up in the Bay Area, where a lot of, you know, my friends and my parents and just everyone we know are all, you know, in high tech and get a degree and a job that will make us a lot of money. And I meet fewer and fewer people who just tell us to do what we want to do. Yeah. Because I think the people who do what they want to do for a living are much happier. And I feel like that's more important than making a ton of money. Uh, yeah, I completely understand that. It's really interesting about you never know, and part of what's happening right now, how much technology is opening up and how much, I think of all my friends who were playwrights, who were not making money, who now suddenly are writing for TV because it's opened up exponentially and they're generating more content and making money. And the same is true with actors. And I think, part of what happens in this business is a constant gauge of, am I happy? Am I, am I fulfilled? Is this what I want? And if not, how could I change it to get what I want? And that's, which is true in any business. People just don't think like that. We just have to keep inventing the wheel and checking in with ourselves because our jobs are usually on rotation. Yeah, a lot of people I meet in the arts all do so many different things. You know, they direct, but they also act and they also teach and they also produce. And that just sounds so exciting. I think it is. I think creative people finding creative ways to do what they want. And it is tricky. I mean, doing it in a high tech area where a lot of the actors we work with also do work in tech. Because again, they're trying to find a balance, trying to still do what they love have a life they can live and everybody is figuring it out and it's never the same for anybody. That's the other thing. It's, it's everybody is on their own path. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for your time today, Giovanna. It was so nice talking to you and just having a, a perspective from an adult who's doing what they love. Um, and it was so cool to hear all of your advice and stories. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Opening the Curtain, Artists in Conversation with Students, a collaboration between TheaterWorks Silicon Valley and Palo Alto Unified School District as part of the Kennedy Center Partners in Education program. We will continue to explore different careers available in the performing arts throughout the school year. Please join us for the next set of videos in the series at the end of each month at theaterworks.org.